Hello, good day, and welcome. Happy Monday. And Monday always Monday means a busy day for me. My favorite day of the week. Well, it's not my favorite day of the week. Do you have a favorite day of the week? I don't. I have a favorite day of the week depending on the week. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, okay, who we got here? Let's see. Oh, hey, Stephen Healy out there wishing us a great show. Stephen, thank you so much. Had a show earlier uh, with Stephen Healy, my friend from the United Kingdom. We've been doing our show together over a year now. It seems like yesterday. <laughs> we broke up last week because of family day, so he took on the show by himself. So thank you to my friend Stephen Healy, and happy birthday. He didn't want me to say it, but I don't know how old he is. He won't tell me. I'm not allowed to ask. So I'm not asking how old Stephen Healy is on his recent birthday. Uh, Dave Brown, who will be joining us at 4 o'clock, says he's looking forward to being on the show. Yes, we always get into some fun conversations. He'll be coming up at 4 o'clock this afternoon. And uh, Corinder is out there saying it'd be great to see you. Well, I'm right here. Hi, Corinder. Two shows you did. That boy, your favorite. My, well, yeah, I do. I typically I do three shows on Mondays. I have um, broadcasting to your community again with my friend, uh, our international show with Stephen Healy from the United Kingdom, who, by the way, lives about 20 minutes from Stonehenge. So if I ever go to England, guess where I'm staying? Just so you know, Stephen, I'll be knocking on your door someday. Um, and then, yes, I do this show. And then tonight on twitch.tv, I'll be doing father versus son with my son, Jason. And uh, he usually kicks my butt at the games we play, but that's okay. We have a lot of fun. So come on by and check that out. What a busy weekend. Did you get out and do anything? I actually, and listen, I know this frustrates me when I'm out and, and I've said this before. I've heard it before. I'm bringing it up again. Somebody said to me, oh, there's nothing to do in Sarnia. And I'm like, really? He goes, yeah. I said, listen, <laughs> let me tell you something. I started a show about eight years ago of things to do in Sarnia. I'm still doing the show, so that must mean there's stuff to do. You just got to get off your couch, man. <laughs> do something. Although I will say he made a bit of a point. Maybe this is something we can address on the show. He's a very young fellow, about 21. 22 maybe. And he said, there's really not a night scene in town. I'll give him that. But there are still other things than going out to the clubs and having fun to do in Sarnia, even for that age group. Anyway, I just, it still blows my mind to hear nothing to do. We're going to talk to some people. We're going to tell you about some things to do. We're going to have a lot of fun here today. Uh, coming up shortly, my first guest today, my friend Helen Cole, who is uh, now part of the Family Counseling Center here, she's going to talk to us about a special event that any age group could go to and have fun. Well, it's sold out now, but you could go. And she's going to talk about some things at the Family Counseling Center that you may want to know about. And then our friend Dave Brown from United Way of Sarnia Lampton is going to give us his update on what's happening with them. And then a young man by the name of Matt Mueller, who is a tennis enthusiast, and is looking to raise about $2 million to build a facility in this area. Very interesting story coming up. He'll be the final guest today at uh, about 4.15. By the way, who won the hockey? Well, we're going to talk about that, Corinna. I'm glad you brought that up. We're going to talk about the starting thing. But first, I want to talk about an event um, that I was at this past weekend, karaoke. I don't do karaoke as much as I did for 20 years. It was my living five, six days a week. And now I do it once in a while. But... Uh, I've had the privilege of getting out to the local Sarnia Moose Lodge the last couple of weekends. They've uh, had me there. We put on a karaoke contest. First week's winners were announced. And these are your winners from this past week. That is uh, Cindy, Lisa, and Ray, first, second, and third. And uh, some of them are going to get to go on to the finals that's coming up this Saturday at the Moose Lodge. If you're looking for some good entertainment, it's free to come in. Um, of course, there's a cash bar and they've got some food there and you want some really good singing entertainment, just come on by the Moose Lodge and hang out. That starts at 7 o'clock. We'll go to 11 o'clock. Congratulations to the winners of this past weekend. And this finals that are coming up will be <clears throat> the local moose and some surrounding moose uh, performers as well. So free concert, put it that way, free concert. The best of the best are going to be there singing, so we'll hope you'll come and join us for that. And thanks to the Moose Lodge for having me uh, be a part of that as well. I'm looking forward to it. Sarnia Sting. Let's talk about the Sarnia Sting. I've referred to them as the stock market of hockey 
this season. What that means is they're up and they're down. There's doesn't seem to be any steady consistency. And I don't say that insultingly. They're a good team. They're going through a lot of changes. Uh, you know, new goalie with Cameron Lemur in there, Ethan Langevin, who, by the way, have been dancing on their heads lately uh, compared to the start of the year. Some new members to the team, some young members, some experienced members. So uh, this past weekend, well, this, this past weekend, they played North Bay Battalion and beat them 6-2. to two. I don't know what it is about the 6-2 to two score, but they won against North Bay 6-2. to two. But earlier in the week, they had a Tuesday game, which was a makeup game against the Sioux, down in the Sioux. Lost that 6-2. to two. So 6-2 to two and 6-2. to 6-2 two. Six to two one way and 6-2 to two in favor of the Sarnia Sting. And then they had to come back and play the Sioux uh, yesterday, Sunday. Of course, I was there uh, live doing the live broadcast. Came out just short, 5-4. to four. This was an interesting game. It was one nothing, then one one. Things turned around. The Sarnia Stain came out in the third period and played extremely well, but it was just a little, little too late, and uh, came up short five to four. Now we always have our post game interviews, and this time, one of my favorite players on the team, Franco Sproviero, who is. I just like him because he's fast. He's no quit. He plays beyond the whistle. He's always there. He's a very uh, unselfish player. In other words, he's always looking to pass the puck and help everybody get their goals in. And we caught up with him, and we're going to take you to this one-on-one uh, -on -one interview with Franco Spurvio right now. Take a look at this. Here post game with Franco Sproviero, uh, a real good third period there. You guys made it interesting. Unfortunately, just couldn't pull, pull it off. Yeah, uh, we can't really wait till the third period to, to play our game. But unfortunately, uh, some goals there we would like to take back with our D zone coverage. But you know, we we just got to focus on to the next game here. We got a big game against Erie, so still some positives over the last uh, three four games. Uh, you got thought you guys have played some good hockey again. A little bit of a letdown in the second period here today, but uh, something to build off maybe that third period and those other games going into next weekend. Yeah, we're starting to see some really good things out of our team here uh, going into the playoffs here. So uh, we just got to keep building on it. We want to be uh, at our best at the end of the season here, and uh, I think uh, things are going a little bit better than they were. So that's a positive. You mentioned playoffs. Is this is a team you could be seeing in the first round. Are you trying to uh, you know, send a message in a game like this? Yeah, we're not really fo we're not really too focused on who we're going to face in the first round. We're focused on what we're doing right now. But yeah, I think uh, we're a good team. We got a lot of good players, and I think we can do a lot of things in the playoffs. We just got to be focused and, and uh, get get where we can in the conference here for uh, a more favorable matchup, hopefully. Uh, obviously, next couple of weeks going to be out on the road. Uh, how tough is it to spend that long away from home? Uh, we're we're used to it. No excuse. I know our record isn't as good on the road, but uh, you know, we, like I said, we got that big game against Erie on Saturday, so. We got to be ready, and then we got the Ice Dogs on Sunday, and that's a hell of a team. So, we got to be ready for both. Uh, like Patrick said, uh, a lot of positives. Uh, they take a game like today. Obviously, there was a, a great compete level, and you guys did come back. What uh, I, I guess, what are you going to use as momentum heading into the road from this game? Yeah, all, like I said, we we could take a lot of good things out of that third period there. I thought we were on them, we were pressuring them. We know we got to get on their D. So. But like I said, we need a full 60 out of us. I think if we play a full 60, we're going to win a lot of the, a lot of those games. Three power play goals tonight. What has been the uh, anything you've been working on in practice on, on the season? Yeah, we've been working on it a little bit. Uh, they also scored three power play goals, so we got to fix that up on our end. So it kind of canceled canceled it out there. So we got to look on the special teams, like I said, and we got to score a little bit more five on five. I think so. All right, well, there you have uh, Franco Sproviero from the Sarnia Sting talking to his post game after a loss against the Sioux Greyhounds 5-4. to four. This is a team that has worked very hard, and uh, while going through the changes, they're still quite, like, even though they're coming up some short, they have some high-scoring games when they're winning, or even when they're coming up behind. You can see they're 5-4 to four and 6-2 to two against North Bay Battalion. So they've still got it in them. They have a no-quit attitude. They keep pushing forward, and now they're heading on the road to Erie and the Niagara Ice Dogs and, of course, playoffs coming up. And as always, I'm at all the home games, uh, myself and Jay Peckham, along with Jake Chersky. They join me, and we do our pregame and intermission shows live at all of the Sarnia Sting home games. And we'll say thanks to our friends uh, at Blackwater Coffee for their support 
of uh, post-game comments and uh, here on the show as well. Uh, check them out at blackwatercoffee.ca. I'm, I'll be down. I'm going to be down there tomorrow for coffee. So Dave, get my. I I like three gringos. If anybody ever wants to buy me a coffee or a Christmas present bag full, three gringos. Just saying. Christmas? Am I? Did I just say Christmas already? Wow. Nothing like planning ahead. All right. Six to two and five to four. Sorry, Sting. Uh, we wish some luck on the road this week. Uh, speaking of this week, I can't believe. Like this is February. But it's really March. Like, this is March. We're coming up to March 1st on Friday. I Like, Christmas will be here before you know it. <laughs> Somebody's going to yell at me for saying that word. But uh, March 1st Friday, all the first Fridays, downtown Sarnia, a great opportunity to get out. And, and, and here, nothing to do in Sarnia, huh? Any age group, get downtown Sarnia on first Friday. Our friends at Cheeky Monkey have invited noise pollution. They're going to be there playing the music from 7 to 9 is when they go on. Great entertainment there. I'm looking forward to hearing this group again. They're, 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 they're new, but not new. They're just newly formed. And um, it would be great entertainment down there. Our friends at Cheeky Monkey will be open all day, of course. Sarnia's only local independent store. When I need something, I go right down to Cheeky Monkey and support local. And uh, Marianne and Roland support local as well. So you can get down there and support local. Something to do. Nothing to do. I still can't get rid of that man. Uh, Friday, 7 o'clock, downtown Cheeky Monkey at the corner of Christina and Cromwell. Something else to do, Revelry Nights and Jeff Getty. He's still going strong. If you don't know who Jeff Getty is, I went to high school with Jeff Getty. Wow. Uh, Jeff Getty, a great entertainer. He'll be down there. And DJ Discreet will be down there. It's only $3 at the door, and the doors open at 5 o'clock. And we'll keep uh, keep in mind all the things that we talk about here. After the show, I'll post some links and these posters so that you can get all the information. So if you happen to miss us, that's okay. Um, and if you're watching live, thank you so much. Say hello in the comments so that we know that you're watching. And if you're watching, we're being simulcast in, where are we? Well, we're in Canada. We're in, throughout the United States. We're broadcasting live in Australia right now. Uh, Ireland, England, and South Africa. That's where we're simulcast here on this show. So... The world is watching. Say hello. Click on the link above if you want us to see our comments. That's where. If you're watching from anywhere else except for the show, I won't see your comments. So make sure you do that. Uh, speaking of comments, let's go back here. Karina he wants to know: Have you interviewed one of the Sting players? Well, yes, I interview them every post game. We have somebody like that, and they're playing Erie. Oh, you like Jameson Reese? Yes, he's a good hockey player. Uh, Franco, does he have Instagram? I don't know. Too early for Christmas? Yeah. Sorry about that. And my friend Kelly Shoddy, he's out there. Shy Shoddy, that's what I'm going to call you because you won't get in front of the camera. We keep trying. Anyway, that's another story. Uh, so check out all these events coming up and uh, something to do. Yeah, okay. Another event coming up here, the Mardi Gras party for Dress to Kill. This is great. If you missed the interview that I had with Keel Simmons from Dress to Kill, look at this. They have an album. An act, it's an album. There you go. They put it out on CD and vinyl. This is fantastic. This is the gift that they gave me. Thank you so much. There's the CD. I'm going to give away. Uh, I've got copies of these to give away. We'll be giving away those uh, by the end of this week. So keep watching the Facebook page for your chance to win these. And as it would have, I also have some tickets to this Mardi Gras party happening out at the Silver Dome in Courtright. The Silver Dome, still going strong on the court right borders. A lot of stories we could tell about the bands I've seen out at the Silver Dome and court right over the years. But that's where they'll be performing. Tickets only $10. There's only a few left. And, of course, I've got some we're going to give away as well. And excited to see them perform their entire album of Dress to Kill called This Old Train. Fantastic album. And uh, come out and join us out there for that as well. All right. What's next on the agenda? Things are not working. <laughs> oh, there it is. Family Counseling Center here in Sarnia. We've had some guests from there uh, on before. And you may just not be aware of all the, you think, counseling. But what's specific? There's a lot of different programs available out there. And, well, our friend Helen Cole is here. And she's going to talk to us about everything that's happening out. Or a lot, not everything, but a lot of the things. We can't talk about everything in 15 minutes. But there she is. Helen Cole, thanks for joining me. Hey, Dave. Thank you so much for inviting me to be on the show. I really appreciate it. No and, problem. Um, I wanted to start 
by thanking all of the people who have supported our sold out jukebox challenge. I'm, I'm blown away. We had 17 tables last year. This year we have 41. Uh, we had planned for 30. Uh, we went up to 40 and we squeezed in one more table. And boy, <laughs> I've got about five people on the waiting list. I wish I could get more tables in. Oh, but wow. We're pretty grateful. And if you're interested, if you contact me, I'll make sure you're on the uh, wait list for next year. We already have the date. It'll right. be Friday, March 27th, 2020. Can wow. you believe it? <laughs> 2020. And I'm talking about Christmas. You're talking about 2020. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to plan <laughs> ahead, right? <laughs> anyway. Um, how would, uh, just before you go on there, so sure. you say if people get a hold of me, how do they get a hold of you? You can contact me at the Family Counseling Center. Um, probably the easiest thing is the phone number, which is 519 336 zero one two zero and my extension is two two seven if you want to put my email in it's helen.cole at family counseling center and that's ctr.com all right fantastic so people can reach me either way and just a little bit uh, the proceeds from the event will go to a variety of programs but two that are pretty close to my heart are the kids on the block which is a troop of life-size puppets they're brought to life by volunteers, and they use the puppets to travel around Lambton County and talk to children uh, about social awareness, safety, and prevention. So I'm, I'm really happy that we can help to support that program. The other one um, that I think is so important is Parents Putting Kids First, which is a three-week three program for parents who are going through separation and divorce. Okay. The, uh, they focus on three areas, the impact of parental conflict on children, strategies for parents to cooperatively raise their children, and what parents need to know from a legal perspective. Um, I, I am not prepared with the date. Um, I should have okay. put that in, but it's in April. Uh, last, uh, last session, last fall, we had a waiting list. So oh, some, wow. of the, some of the things that people might not be aware of. I know I always knew the Family Counseling Center was there, but I didn't know that we worked with programs such as helping um, developmentally challenged adults to live their life. We have uh, social workers here that that is all they do. They will help by taking uh, people to appointments, help with paying their bills. Um, they even have um, a one one day a month where they meet at the story and thanks to the story for offering that space. Right. Um, they recently had a cooking class, for example, uh, all microwavable stuff, of course, but teaching them life skills that are really important to live in today's world. Well, the, the other thing, should I just keep talking, Dave? Sure. You go ahead. No, it's fine. I, I got my, I got my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it just feels so awkward because I'm not sure if you're going to ask me questions. No, no, no. I, I'm just going. I would just ask you what what is this all about. So if you okay. just keep telling us what it's all about, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the Family Counseling Center, I think, is known for counseling services. Yeah, for what, sure. What people may not be aware of is that we also offer an employee assistance program. So we contract with employers in the area to provide that service. And uh, we have over 8,000 individuals in Lambton and Kent that we currently provide those services to. So in Kent County, we work with the uh, center in Chatham and in Lambton, of course, it, it is ours. So people, um, if they're interested, again, they can call that same number, ask yeah. for intake. And intake will do a screening and interview, if you will, and decide what counselor would be best for them, where they should be placed. Now, let me just let me just hold you hold you up there for a second, because sure. uh, yep. I think one of the things that comes to mind about uh, uh, counseling of, of any kind, and there's lots of services out there, is the money. And uh, maybe I need counseling services, but I'm not quite in the financial position, I would think. Is there support for, for 
for people who need the services but aren't quite in the financial position to have it? Or how does that work? Yes, there's two ways that works. One, if your company um, has an EAP program, or if they don't, call me. Um, right. Two, if, they, if you have um, a benefit like Sun Life, in most cases, you would be allowed to pay for your counseling and then expense it to your benefit program, such as Sun Life again. Oh, okay. The other way that you can access help is by calling us. And if you, um, there is a subsidy that's available for adults okay. and it works, it works based upon your income. For example, if you have an income of $30,000 per year, the fee is assigned at $1 per thousand dollars of income. So if you have an income of 30,000 per year, that would result in a fee of $30 a session. Does that right. make sense? Yeah, yeah, and, no, that's good. And to know. that is covered by United Way, who I know is one of your guests. So yeah. we're very, we're very grateful to Dave Brown and United Way for their support of the Family Counseling Center. Yeah, well, Which, and that's uh, that's he's sitting in the lobby waiting to be next, so he heard that. Okay, <laughs> yay, Dave. <laughs> and so um, our counseling is strength based. So we work with you to find ways to address your problems. It's, it's not meant to be long-term. It's meant to help you to get on your feet and to start making changes. And some right. of the comments that I've seen from individuals, it's just so gratifying to see that people are saying, thank you so much for helping us. Um, I don't know how I could have ever survived without you. Similar types of comments. So, you know, it feels good to work here and know that even though I do business development and EAP um, coordination, I'm helping in a small way within our community. It's just such a great, great organization. Yeah. Well, we had uh, we had some guests on a few weeks ago talking about what, what they're doing at the Family Counseling Center and, and yes. uh, some stories were shared as well. And uh, it's one of the questions uh, that, that Corinder was saying out there is, you know, what's the effect of, of the Family Counseling Center? And uh, he's over in the United Kingdom watching this, um, but he's oh. still asking, saying, uh, what kind of effect has the Family Counseling Center had on the community? And I think, you know, you, you somewhat answered that all, already, and, and I've heard uh, many of the stories. Uh, there's a, there is a strong impact that the Family Counseling Center is having on here in Sarnia Lampton. And Donna, when she was on your show, she talked about the distress line and Telcheck. Yes. Two really, really important programs that Family Counseling Center offers. And again, thank you, Dave of United Way. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, there's got to be a lot involved with something like that, too. And I mean, you know, uh, uh, while, while organizations have volunteers, this is these are professionals, professionally trained. And even the volunteers, excuse me, that do come in. Uh, they have to be trained, right? So there has to be, I'm Correct. sure, some cost attached to that. Absolutely. There is a cost attached to that. The uh, training is uh, very comprehensive. Donna Martin has been doing this for a long, long time, and she's an expert. Um, so I really don't want to speak to her work. I just know they do such wonderful work. And Donna has told me some amazing stories of people that they've helped over the years. And that's available 24-7, yeah. 365 days a year. Thank you to our volunteers who do such an important job with that. I thought about volunteering myself, um, but I'm not sure my boundaries would, I would want to adopt every person I talk to. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> so I, I don't think that's a, a good fit for me, but it is for many, many people um, yeah. who are really providing such a great service to us. Yeah. Well, so, that's an interesting point too, as you know, as a volunteer in this type of thing, uh, you could get easily emotionally attached, right? And uh, um, that's good, but that can get in the way sometimes too. So. so so Donna invites anyone to explore the possibilities. The first thing that would happen is she would have an interview with the individual that would help both of them determine whether it would be suitable uh, yeah. volunteer experience. But she's she's been doing this, as I said, and she's very experienced and we're grateful to have her. And we love the service and the Telcheck service as well. We made 28,000 phone calls last year. 
Wow. So it's very important. That's um, a lot of talking on the phone. It is. And for people that are socially isolated, un- unable to get out, or children live far away, it's so helpful to know that you've got that contact. And some people look forward to that phone call every day. Well, I can imagine. Like, uh, Well, and Donna did share one of those stories about a lady who, uh, you know, wait- waited for that phone call. And, and she even expressed, uh, I mean, long story short, uh, that her life was saved just because of that phone call. That's or right. She, or she had been thinking about just saying goodbye to this world right. and, and you know, because whatever. And that, that, it's not even a phone call. We should call it a voice, I guess, right? Right. Uh, that, that that person is hearing. And so there is an effect going on there with the Family Counseling Center. What, so so, what kind of things uh, do you do to, uh, you know, obviously we're, we're putting you out there because we want people to know about it, but what, what other ways does Family Counseling Center put themselves out there so that people know that this is available? Uh, I guess that's my job, and it's one of the reasons I'm on your show today, Dave. Yeah. (laughs) So um, we do have a Facebook page, Family Counseling Center Facebook page, and uh, um, we're putting stuff out there on a regular basis. We also have the Distress Line, Telcheck Line Facebook page. Um, I'm finding that people are really paying attention to what's on Facebook page. Yeah. So, and and I'm out there talking to people everywhere I go um, about the service, and we're looking for ways that we can continue to educate the community about the services we provide. So, if someone, a service club, for example, is interested in learning more, again, same phone number, same extension, just give me a call and we can make that happen. And I'd like to, I know my time is short, and I'd like to end by just sure. saying that we offer employee assistance programs to businesses in the community. If there is a business owner, or manager who's watching today and is interested and would like to know more about how we can customize specialized employee assistance programs to their needs. Again, same phone number. Just give me a call. And it's extension 227. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. I just want to make sure I got that right. Yeah. Well, that's important to know that uh, that's available because, uh, well, and, and counseling is probably, because, uh, I mean, and there's a whole, and we'll certainly have you or, or whoever back uh, uh, as a regular guest here on the show to talk about the programs. But there's a multitude of programs from, you know, you say family counseling, but that, that breaks out into a tree of, uh, you know, youth issues to divorce to anger management correct uh, to life skills and training. And there's just... It's a big place. I want to tell you, folks, I was out there for a tour there recently. I've been there before, but it was nice to get back and get a refresher course. And and uh, there's a lot of things going on there at the Family Counseling Center. It's not just this little corner office somewhere. And uh, Dave, I remember, Dave, when you visited, you asked about duplication. Mm-hmm. And we work in partnership with the other agencies in the city, in Lambton County, so yeah. that we eliminate that duplication. An individual or a family may come to us, and we may determine that there is another program that's a better fit for them. Yeah. And so we will redirect them. But we do have a variety of counselors here at the center who specialize in um, family counseling, marriage uh, counseling, uh, uh, different Things related to children, for example, we've got a wide variety of counselors and with different specialties in different areas. So we really can provide almost anything that might be needed. And as I said, if we can't, then we redirect the individual. Yeah, you've got a lot of collaboration going on. Yeah, we do. Yes. Yeah, yes, and I think do. that's a good point that to put out there that because that conversation does come up in our community, as you and I know that oh well, why is that one starting over there? We've already got something like that over there, and and uh, it's good to know that the, the money's because money gets wasted otherwise, right? So uh, it's nice to know that mm-hmm. duplication's being looked after so that it doesn't happen. That's that's good stuff. Uh, before I let you go, uh, boy, I seem like that fifteen minutes just flew by. Is there anything else mm-hmm. you want to get in there before I, I bring our friend Dave Brown on? I think that's it, but I'd love to come back again or have someone from the center come back and talk about some of our programs that they specialize in. Yeah. 
Well, I um, was talking with, uh, is it is it Amy that does the block program, Blocks for Kids? Yes, yes. And oh, I sort terrific. of started a conversation and we've, uh, maybe if you can wrap on her door to say, hey, David wants you to fill that link in. Uh, okay. We'll get her. I, we maybe we can get her on here next week. I will week. do that. And I'm having. She's coming to uh, Jukebox Challenge to demonstrate her skills and talent. She's bringing oh, okay. uh, uh, at least one puppet. So I'm I'm excited to see. Oh, her I'm in sorry. Action. I'm going to miss that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, just for you, we'd let you drop in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Boy, she that Helen Cole. She doesn't give up. <laughs> Trying to get David Burroughs there. All right. Take, I'll, take care, I'll see what David. I can do. Helen, thank, thank you, you so much so for being much. here. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. I appreciate, appreciate it. Uh, Helen Cole from the Family Counseling Center. And a little bit of lag there in the audio. I apologize. I uh, uh, never know how these things work out. But uh, we got the message out there. So thank you, Helen Cole. And if you want to find out more about the Family Counseling Center and all the services that they offer, um, there's a number on the screen to give them a call. And that is Helen's extension. She'll take all your questions and guide you in the right direction and get you the help that you need. It's a fantastic service. And uh, we're going to be having them back here regularly on the show to talk about their services. So look forward to that. Thanks again, Helen. All right. Well, as supporters uh, or one of the supporters, as Helen mentioned, the United Way of Sarnia Lambton and our friend Dave Brown, always happy to make some time for us to be here and have some conversation. Hello, David. Hello, David. How are you? Great to have you back. Hey, it's always a pleasure to be on the show. Yeah, well, we always do have these good conversations, and uh, I think we we think we might have missed last month because of holidays or something. But uh, so I you've probably so. got a ton to talk about. Well, since I guess the last time we spoke, we have uh, uh, decided on our community investments for the next three years for eighteen agencies that are going to be providing thirty six programs and services here in Sarnia Lambton as a result of people's donations in last uh, fall's campaign. Yeah, and and talk about what. Uh, let's backtrack a little bit because I know sure. uh, you brought up the investments that the United Way does, and I thought that was a really interesting conversation. I don't think a lot of people realize that you're doing that sort of thing. So explain what that is. Sure, and I really enjoyed uh, deep diving a bit into that uh, last time we spoke. You know, the United Way, I think you mentioned, is a lot more than just <laughs> pledge cards and and burgers and barbecues. <laughs> yeah. um, we take a serious look at investing our donated dollars uh, as best we can, uh, which enables more money to go to the agencies. Uh, for example, um, previously we invested uh, campaign funds into short-term GICs. I mean, we could get a corporate gift from Imperial and for Nova, and we make our allocations uh, to our agencies on a monthly basis. So we may not need that money for another couple of months. Right. Uh, so so we, we've been putting that in short-term GICs, which right now pays about 1.1%. One, uh, we've since decided uh, a year ago to invest that into a bond fund, uh, which is, in fact, the, first, the best or second best bond fund in Canada, uh, oh, wow. which brings us a monthly dividend of 4.2%. Now, that 3.2% is a lot of money when you're looking at upwards to a million dollars in some short Oh, yeah, investment. for sure. So so when you take a look at the fact that we just missed our goal by just $31,000, uh, which, by the way, when you dig deep into the numbers, we were very, very successful. But when you look at the fact that we had about a million dollars invested in those short-term uh, bond funds, Brought us in uh, about forty-two thousand dollars, thirty or thirty-two thousand dollars more money than we did last year, the previous year, 20, 2017. That means even though we missed goal by thirty-one thousand dollars, that brings us into a par. And then when you look at the cost savings that we're doing by moving and doing other cost efficiencies, we actually have more money to invest in community uh, services than we did the previous year. So yeah. I'm really proud of the board of making those kinds of decisions, just squeezing as much out of every donated dollar as we can, both before, during, and after the campaign to uh, to result in more money for agencies. Yeah. Well, I think it's important that the public understand that too, because I think uh, when somebody makes a donation to a charity or a nonprofit, and there's a lot of great ones here in Sarnia. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we don't deny that, but I, it's typically, I think, an emotional decision. It's mm -hmm. usually some form of uh, attachment. Uh, if you are someone who's had epilepsy like myself, you might right. donate to the Epileptic Foundation or you might donate. To, but I That's think right. it's people understand 
I'm not just donating and, and putting my trust in that uh, nonprofit or charity, which they do. Mm-hmm. It's important for them to understand exactly what's happening with that money. Like you talk about moving as a right. cost, you know, that was a, co- a, a, a cost, a, a conscious choice for cost right. savings there. I finally got it out. <laughs> um, and, and uh, I just think it's important for people to know where their money's going. They want to know what's happening. And uh, let's talk about the move and let's talk about the local sure. as well, the local side of things, but talk about the move first. Uh, absolutely. Uh, we right now are on E Street, the old yeah. Sarnia Medical Building, uh, the Chris Dawson Foundation. Uh, we're actually going to be moving to uh, Lambton Mall Road, uh, just down from the library and Kumon. In fact, we're two doors right. down from, from Kumon next to Covers. It's a much smaller location. Uh, so, that I mean, the, the cost per square footage is actually a little bit more. But when you look at we're in a much smaller office. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we don't have shared space, so we don't have a boardroom or meeting rooms or, or anything that we currently share with agencies. So we've eliminated those costs from our from our budget. And so now we'll just borrow boardrooms. I mean, many of our, our agencies have boardrooms. Many of our donors uh, have boardrooms and are, yeah. are very open to a lot of us using theirs. So I pay for our own. So when you eliminate those costs, we're going to be saving about $1,000 a month. Uh, so over a course of the year, that's twelve thousand dollars. Plus, we're going to a new telephone system, uh, which is yeah. going to save us about another two to three thousand dollars a year. Uh, and we're big believers. Our board and the staff and everybody on the same page. For every dollar we can save, quite literally, is another dollar that goes out to agencies. And that's and that's essentially our business plan. Well, that's the bottom line of what you're supposed to be doing, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> that's right. Out there. <laughs> And, and I think, you know, we've been around now for 62 or 63 years, and I think we've got a, a reputation to uh, to uphold to, and people expect us to make these hard decisions and uh, and to make those decisions so that they know their money is going to, to where it's needed the most. And when you say we, you say we make these decisions, let's talk about uh, you have sure. a board, but it's it's a it's a board of volunteers, but a board of local uh, businesses, or what, who, who makes up the board? Absolutely. I, I say we, I should say the board, but I say we because we are on the same page and we're all on the same team and, and we want the same outcomes. So, but it is the board that makes the decisions. It's not, it's not me and it's not staff. They make decisions on our budget. They make decisions on who gets how much funding, that kind of thing. And what I like most about the United Way is, yeah, we save the money raised in the community is used in the community, but it's much more than that. It's local problem solving, the local issues by local people. That local decision making, I think, is so key. And that's one of the things that we may, you know, grind our teeth a little bit when we're looking at our taxes going to 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 Toronto or going to Ottawa or whatnot. Uh. They're making that decision for us. Exactly. <laughs> when you're making your donation to the United Way, there's fifteen local people who live, work, and play right here in the same community, who understand this community. There's the ones that make the decisions as to what's best in our community. For those donated dollars and it may be different in Chatham or Toronto or, or London but it's local decision making and I think that that's key yeah I think it's really important uh, to have that uh, well I talk I talk about emotional attachment often but to have that local attachment in there um, like you say they kind of know what's going on they live here they feel it they breathe it they, they know uh, what things are happening uh, now? Can anybody be on the board, or how do you get to be on the board? Is there a process involved with that? Uh, uh, there is a process because there are just fifteen members, and yep. uh, and all fifteen uh, members at the end of the the calendar year have a choice to make. They can either stay on, uh, or they could leave, uh, right. or if they've been on for ten years, they have to leave. There's, you know, that way there's a constant you know, refresher of new ideas and new energy yeah. and whatnot. Uh, so then at the end of the year, when we find out who's staying and who's going, uh, we take a look at what what needs we might have on the board. Maybe we want somebody from a particular sector. Uh, we want to make sure that we have an equal number of men and women, an equal number of those retired versus those working, uh, and that kind of thing. And then we take a look at who's already a supporter of ours, and uh, and we approach them based on on those needs and on the tools that they have. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, the, we talk about money like it grows on trees sometimes, but uh, <laughs> um, well, and actually, a good example there though is you know Helen Cole, the Family Counseling Center. There's one of the services that the United Way supports. 
That's right, and, and Helen's a great spokesperson. She's uh, she's working out really well at the Family Counseling Center, and I can tell you, I personally enjoy working with her. You know, she talked about uh, the distress line. Uh, the Family Counseling Center itself is our biggest funded agency, and right now we're funding that agency two hundred twenty-eight thousand four hundred eighty-two dollars. Wow. Almost fifty-nine thousand of that. Uh, goes to the tell check and the distress line. And I think you hit the, name, the nail on the head when you talked about some people who are in dire straits, who may be suicidal, who, and, and all they need is somebody to talk to, somebody to tell them that life's important. And, and I know for a fact that the um, distress line has some real tangible outcomes of yes. saving people's lives right here in our community, and, uh, and I'm very proud of, uh, of that particular agency. And, of course, the bulk goes to that, that counseling. And you asked about the, the subsidy, about the sliding scale based on your annual income. Yeah. Um, and, and that's not a program that can be done by volunteers. I mean, we're so no. fortunate in our community. We've got so many programs that depend on volunteer, Meals on Wheels, volunteer transportation drivers, and so on. Professional counselors for people who have a multitude of sometimes very, very specific problems, it, you need qualified professional counselors. Um, not necessarily volunteers can play that role. So as a result, that is our most expensive uh, program that we fund in Sarnia Lampton. Yeah, it must be difficult to uh, uh, go through the process uh, of deciding who gets what, and I, I'm, I'm guessing you probably have to say no to some people. We do. Uh, in fact, it's almost a full year process. I mean, and that's one of the reasons why we fund our agencies based on three years. So the yeah. agency knows in three years exactly how much money they're getting. They can do long-range planning. Uh, they can focus more time providing the quality service and less time worrying about agencies, while at the same time reduces our own costs. So that enables us to do things like day of caring and agency training and teaching them how to measure their outcomes and impacts uh, and that kind of thing. But you talked about saying no to an agency. One is the, uh, the Lampton Elderly Outreach. Uh, sorry, I'm wrong. They got an increase, actually. Uh, it's the Lantern Seniors um, oh, yeah, right. that, uh, that we've had to cut. Um, they provide a handyman, handywoman program whereby uh, seniors will come to the home of seniors uh, to do some work on their house. Now, when we first started funding them, uh, they were the only agency that did that. Um, we had to cut them because now there's a lot of choice that seniors have, uh, yeah. as well as we wanted to focus on seniors living in poverty. I mean, we, there's no debating the Lampton seniors did a great program and a great service, but we needed to focus uh, the funding on seniors in, living in poverty. And there's a number of seniors in our community who are house poor. They may have inherited their home, the family home that they've been in for 30 or 40 years or more, uh, oh, and that's all they've got. And they want to live in their home. But maybe they can't afford the the to repair the roof, or the um, the back deck is uh, is dry rot, or they need somebody to clean the eaves trough so that the roof stays in good shape. Um, so we realize that how important that is. Uh, but there's other agencies that do that. Uh, yeah. We're now providing the day of caring, which enables us to do more work. I was going to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. So if I can just get back. So that funding that we did for the Lampton Seniors, we're now using for Lampton Elderly Outreach while we're subsidizing the Meals on Wheels in the county. Right. We've increased our funding for transportation services by both the Lampton Elderly Outreach in the county and by the Red Cross in Sarnia. So we're, we're trying to focus, again, that money, yes, on seniors, uh, but seniors in poverty. And right now, 30% of our available allocations is being used for uh, seniors funding. Well, it can't, like I said, can't be easy decisions and I'm sure it's, it's not always a happy thing to have to do, but, uh, for, for th that sounds like logical reasoning behind there, why you'd have to make a decision. You don't, you don't want, we, Helen and I talked about duplication, right? Right. Uh, you don't want any of that happening out there as well. There's only, and there's only so much to go around cause you, you had to come up, you were trying to hit $2 million, right? Right, right. Yeah, our goal was $2 million, which was what we raised the previous year. Uh, but we did fall just short, uh, just 31000 And And like I said, when you look at the numbers uh, and what other uh, charitable organizations and other United Ways did last year, uh, we were very fortunate and we're very grateful that we raised as, as much as we did and can still funnel the, uh, the funding on, on where it's needed most. 
Yeah, and Sarnia Lampton, a great community for for giving support to so many things, uh, including United Way here in Sarnia Lampton. Absolutely, uh, giving That's dollars true. as well as their, their time. Yeah, absolutely. Dave, uh, geez, I'm going to have to do a two-hour show so you and I can have a half an hour or more of it uh, each time. But uh, mm-hmm. if, if people want to get a hold of you, they'll find – I know Corinder, he's over in the United Kingdom. But uh, I noticed that. It's just, great to have him uh, on board. How can we uh, get in touch? Uh, how can people well, get in touch with you at the United Way? Uh, the best way is through our website, uh, www.theunitedway.com. .on.ca. And from there, the entire list of staff is there, uh, as well as uh, direct emails. Um, and we, we reply and double check all of our emails uh, that we receive. So that's the best way to contact us through the website. We'll get back to you. We're happy to answer any questions anybody uh, might have. Yeah. Dave, thanks so much, my friend. I'm sure I'll be seeing you around town pretty soon, but uh, I know we'll have you uh, back here again next month. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Take care, Dave. Thanks. All right. Our friend Dave Brown, executive director of the United Way of Sarnia Lambton. I do appreciate him being here. And he's scheduled to be here once a month to keep us updated. Uh, He's always got some new things going on to talk about. We'll talk about some of the same things, too, but that's because we want to get the message out there to understand the importance of the United Way and where your donations are headed to. So thanks again to our friend uh, Dave Brown at United Way. Uh, A couple questions I see out there before I go on to my next guest. Let me see. I get a hold of United Way. Great to keep updated. Good job. Oh, you like? Oh, thank you, Alfredo. He likes my tie. I appreciate it. I have 45 ties. It's a problem. (laughs) But if you want to buy me something for Christmas or my birthday or something, I can always take a new tie. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm looking forward to this next uh, guest, this young gentleman. He's very motivational. He is determined. And we're going to tell you his story. Matt Mueller, patiently waiting here in the lobby. He's coming on board right now. Hello, Matt Mueller. Thanks for being here. Hi, thanks. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Um, Matt? Let, before we get started on your story, which is uh, quite an interesting one, um, tell everybody who you are, how old you are. Uh, I'm 16. Uh, I'm Matt Mueller. I'm from Petrolia. <laughs> that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's about it. Well, there's more to you than than what's uh, just that. You are a tennis fanatic, right? Uh, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's your where Where does your love of tennis come from? Um. Well, when I was growing up. Pretty much like everyone in Petrolia, I, I played hockey, and then uh, I had a couple of really bad concussions, so I had to stop. And uh, so I was just walking around Walmart one day, saw a tennis racket on sale for ten bucks, and I picked it up and decided to play. So that's kind of where it started from, I guess. Great story, great story. Now you are in the process of looking to build a facility and raise. Is it is it two million dollars you need to raise? Yeah, it's about 2.6 to 2.8, yeah. 2.6 to, to give or take. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where did, you want to build a facility here in Sarnia Lambton. Um, where, why? What do you, what do you want, what made you want to do this? Well, like, just, there's, there's a need in the community for a place where people can come, uh, come and just walk inside because in Petrolia right now, there's no place where people can walk. Obviously, there's no indoor tennis from, Windsor all the way to London and uh, also the same goes for batting cages and golf simulators there's a couple in Sarnia but they're booked and there's a huge need for that right so is this something that would be out Petrolia way or in Sarnia or where, where would you build yeah. this so right now we have the we've got the principal for land in Petrolia right next to the uh, YMCA there okay and so yeah that's where it's that's where it's planned to go once things start moving Right. Now, okay, let's talk about this. Uh, you're 16 years old, and you want to come up with $2.6 million. When you come up with this, this idea and this big vision, and then you start telling adults like mom and dad or family or people around you who are adults, do they look at you like this is an impossible thing to achieve or are you getting? Did you get the support right away, or did you have to do some convincing? I mean, from my parents, they've always kind of taught me since I was little to dream big. So I mean, yeah. from there, from them, I haven't. They're not discouraged or anything like that. But definitely, some people look at me like I have a third eye. But <laughs> um, 
Yeah, it's def it's definitely doable. Even some people at school, uh, some are really like, oh, that's that's super cool. And then there's some that are like, are you out of your tree? Like, there's no chance that's gonna happen. But it, all it takes is one person. So. Yeah. Well, and you know, if if you don't try, you're guaranteed fail, right? Pardon? If you don't try at all, yeah, if you don't exactly. at least make the attempt, yeah, you're yeah. guaranteed. It's a guaranteed fail. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And, uh, I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can see that back there, but that's a picture. It says "Dream Big," so I'm oh. I'm with you on this, Matt. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> what kind of things are, are have you been to? Because this started, and uh, I think I saw you. Were you at a? Was the original plan to build in Sarnia? Yeah, there was, but uh, we weren't able to find uh, land that was suitable for the for the complex. There was okay. some. Yeah, there was some out of ways, but it wasn't it wasn't suitable in Central. Right, because I believe I think I saw you at a city council, yeah. a Sarnia city council meeting, yeah. doing a presentation, and I think uh, I think even some of the councilors uh, reached into their pocket and gave you uh, some hundred dollar bills, and yeah. and and that got things uh, off and running. And now you've moved it up Petrolia Way for obvious reasons. Where are you at in this number of two point six million? Well, right now uh, we we haven't really started fundraising because we're just we're just getting the banking agreement uh, hammered down. So then companies can give, we can give them tax receipts and stuff for that. So right now that's what we're working towards. And uh, we actually just filed off the seeds grant application for Trillium. And so okay. based if we get that back or not, it will, uh, we'll get hope for asking for $53,000 for a feasibility study. But once the bank uh, bank account gets all figured out, then we'll start fundraising. So right now, Right now, we just had a couple uh, little donations here and there, and uh, I think we have about seven thousand dollars right now in our bank account. But seven thousand dollars closer than you were a year ago. Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. Every little bit counts. What's your vision with all of this? Besides, you, you know, uh, obviously building this and making it a tennis facility. Uh, we've seen things pop up in other communities that it's a, a, a facilities are operated. 24 hours a day um is this a membership thing or what's the business plan once the, the building's there everything's up and ready to go and open the doors what's the business plan yeah so one of the one of the things is it's not just a tennis facility obviously like it would appeal to everyone like there's going to be the the batting cages the uh, golf simulators and there's going to be a, a, tr a track around the outside with uh it, with jumping jumping pits so the track teams could all come and train in the winter too okay and also the one thing with the tracks it would attract it would attract all the all the seniors too which would be really good to get people active in the community right but uh one of the things that we might be looking into is uh, a, a potential tennis academy okay so, uh in patrol at, at lccvi we have a pile of exchange students that come every year I think we have 28 this year, actually. And uh, wow! So, like in Toronto and Niagara, at some of the places I play, it's forty, forty to sixty thousand dollars to play there a year. Wow! So, That's yeah. somebody's salary. Oh yeah, it's outrageous. <laughs> but uh, wow. yeah, so one of the things uh, we might we're gonna try to implement is to have that tennis academy and uh, charge. It would be for international students and local people, obviously, and charge. Uh, around fifteen thousand dollars each per kid and if 10 people show up for the year then that will fully support the facility on its own oh wow that's fantastic yeah, so, that so alone, you sorry go ahead uh that alone would that's not even going over any of the over the um court fees or uh, batting cage rentals or golf simulator fees like none of that we haven't hammered any of that out yet but right just that alone and it would also be uh paying for a pro there who would get paid like ninety eight thousand dollars a year that's incorporated right. in the into the amount do you see this as a facility where maybe you have some big tournaments at someday yeah so um i don't know if you've heard about it or not but there might be a hotel coming to petrolia and there's it's literally uh three minute walk not even from where this would be so for sure people could come come down to petrolia play the play the big tournament and stay at the hotel while they're there which would be great you you uh 
your story, you know, uh, if you haven't discovered already, I'm sure you have. You've, you're inspiring to a lot of people. You know that? Uh, I, guess, <laughs> I guess, like, I mean, I just, I'm just trying to get people to, to get active, I guess. And your, pa- your passion shows in you there, and you're inspiring because um, I, I think uh, at 16 years old and younger, sometimes we look at our young people and think, oh, boy, they, they think they can do this, but the reality is, and, and you're just not letting that any of that get in your way. You've made your decision to do this, whatever it takes. You will get there. Uh, whatever it takes, and it sounds like you know, with 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 mom and dad and family, and and you're 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 hanging out with the right people to support you. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, I think uh, I'm I'm I, I we've never met. I'm 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 very proud of you for taking this on because I think it's important. Uh, not just important for the obvious on the outside. It's important for young folks like yourself to be a part of your community and, and do something to give back. And uh, as moms and dads and everybody else gets older, that's going to be your community and maybe your kids there someday. So this is, this is really a lifelong vision for you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Matt, thanks for being here before I go. Is there anything else that you want to talk about or put out there for and want people to know? Well, I guess one of the cool things, one of the cool things about the design of the facility is that, uh, it's not just a big concrete indoor structure. It would have uh, removable walls in the summertime. So okay. It would stay cool in the summertime. So uh, that way, that way, it's not like you get you're gonna you're gonna be like super super hot there in the summertime. But gotcha. the roof would stay on, so you're protecting from the sun and the rain. You can play in the rain. So that's uh, that's just something. A fun fact, I guess. Yeah, no, that's very cool. Now, so are you involved in the design of this? Um, no, we're uh, not really. Um, Clive Berry, he's an he's an engineer and he's a avid tennis player too. Um, oh, okay, good combination been, there. Yeah, he's been uh, he's been the head of that sort of thing. Awesome. Well, Matt, I hope you'll come back uh, when you're ready to again and give us an update on where you're at and when you start doing some fundraising. Uh, please get a hold of me. I'd love to help you with that if I can awesome. help promote it or be a part of it in, in some way. I'd really like to support you with that. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Matt Mueller, thank you so much. How's school going? Uh, busy. <laughs> busy as always, I guess. Good. Good. All right. Matt, you take care, and thanks so much for your time here today on the show. All right. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Matt Mueller, what a fantastic story. Uh, he's looking to put together $2.6 million dollars to build this facility. And yeah, in the beginning you go, really? Like, wow, good for him at 16 years old. And might take two, might take three years. You never know. But I think by talking to him, you can tell he's going to get there no matter what. Uh, Time has flown by. That's a full hour. And I want to say thank you to all of you who have stopped by. And thank you to my guest, Helen Cole from the Family Counseling Center talking to us about some of the services available there. Dave Brown, an executive director from United Way, Sarnia Lambton, supporting 18, agency, 18 agencies, I'm, I'm having trouble talking today, 18 agencies and about 35 services. One of them that he talked about is the Family Counseling Center and some of their services. And then of course, Matt Mueller, 16 year old tennis fanatic, looking to raise $2.6 million to build this faci- facility. There I am again, facility out in Petrolia. Wow. Some great people always showing up here. And you who are watching, I think you're great for being here as well. I'll be live again later tonight on Twitch. It is Father versus Sun Night on twitch.tv slash Dev Burrows. Hope you'll come by and join us here. If you enjoyed the show here at all today, please give us a 10 in the comments below. And if you didn't enjoy yourself, don't tell anybody. Just come back and give me another chance next week. And uh, we'll talk more about what's happening in this community, things to do in this community. If you'd like to be a guest on the show to talk about something positive you're doing in the community and an event you have coming up, get a hold of me right here on Facebook. I'm not hard to find. That's all the time I got for you this week, everybody. Have a great week and an even better weekend. I will see you next time right here on the show. Bye-bye for now.